property here. Uh, it's tied down well though. I think that it's, it's, this is, uh, <laughs> I actually wasn't expecting it to be this windy. Hopefully you can actually hear what I'm saying. Uh, this is, this is, I think, the, the most inspiring thing that I've ever seen. Um, and I'd just like to uh, thank the, the, the SpaceX team and the, the suppliers and um, really like the, 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 the people of, uh, of, of Boke Cheek and Brownsville. Uh, thank you for your support and uh, just like, wow, what an incredible job um, by a, a, such a great team to build this incredible vehicle. Uh, so I just like, first of all, I want to start I'm just so so so, pr so proud to work with such a great team, um, and uh, <laughs> it's really roping here. By the way, if you're watching this online, <laughs> it is like a, it is really windy. <laughs> um, so the, the the point of this uh, this presentation and this this event it is really uh, there, there, there are two elements to it. One is to uh, in inspire the public, um, get people excited about. Uh, our future in space, and um, and get people fired up about the future. The, the what? what um, there, there are so many things to worry about, so many things to be concerned about. Um, there's there are many troubles in the world, of course, and we th these are important, and we need to solve them. But we also need things that make us ex excited to be alive, that make us glad to wake up in the morning. So this is uh, as you, well, you can really see it right there, obviously. Uh, there's the picture of more rendering. It's um, about 150, about 50 meters, so, um, you know, about sort of 165 feet or so. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, the, the trip, I think, <laughs> actually, I noticed we have an error in our ship dry mass here. My apologies. <laughs> I, I wish it was uh, 85 tons. <laughs> the sh ship dry mass would be approximately 120 tons. Um, this, the, the, the initial Mach 1 prototype is, is closer to 200 tons, and the, in series production, um, I think it would probably be about 120 tons. Um, if we get really lucky, it might get down to 110. 99 would be super epic. Um, so, uh, but but in, in terms of its, its usefulness, it'll be, be able to do about 150 tons with full reusability uh, to orbit and back. So this is this is a very you know big number for full reusability. Um, the the very, the very initial versions we're confident will do over 100 tons, but I think we, there's a clear path to uh, 150 tons. Um, and the. the the, the cost of, of, of a fully reusable system is basically the cost of the propellant, which is mostly oxygen. Um, this is th uh, three and a half tons of, oxy of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. So one of the advantages of, of, the, of, of this architecture uh, over the Falcon architecture is that we actually use more oxygen uh, per, per unit of fuel rather than, than less. So um, uh, Merlin or the, the, the the Falcon architecture is about two and a half tons of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. This is three and a half tons of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. So when this ascends, it's really mostly liquid oxygen. Um, because when you get to vacuum, there's no air, basically. Um, so, yeah. Um, next slide. So, so the, um, earlier I was talking about how Starship uh, enters and how it's controlled, um, it's, it's really, it's quite different from anything else. It's really um, falling, and so we're controlled for, so with the rocket, you're actually trying to break, um, as opposed to trying to break drag instead of it. It's, it's really the opposite of an aircraft. You want the most amount of drag that you can produce, um, and you want some lift, especially when you're in the upper atmosphere, mostly so that you can control the maximum heating rate. Um, you want enough lift to keep yourself high in the, the low density portion of the atmosphere, so you can you can burn off velocity, and, and then uh, so you want, and, 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 but then you know basically it goes like if this is the if this is the Earth, it goes it goes at about a sixty degree. <laughs> so my hand is wrong. It, it's, it's going at about sixty degrees. Um, so when when it orbits, you're 
actually going at around 25 times the speed of sound, horizontal to the ground. So this is a, a very important concept that is counterintuitive to our normal daily life. Um, being in orbit, being in zero G, is not about altitude, it's about velocity. How fast are you going um, uh, horizontally? <laughs> this doesn't, um, so when, when something's in orbit, it's zooming around the Earth so fast that the outward acceleration, outward radial acceleration is in, equal to the inward acceleration of gravity, and then you have zero gravity. This is why you actually have zero gravity. The space station, people often think the space station is stationary, but it's actually going around the world at 25 times the speed of sound, or about 17,000 miles an hour. The, it, look, it, it always looks stationary in the pictures. Um, and because there's no air, you don't have to have a, a, an aerodynamic structure. So you can be a totally crazy structure that, that doesn't look like it should be able to go 25 times the speed of sound, but it does. Um, and you can only feel acceleration, you can't feel velocity. So, people sometimes like to wonder, what does it feel like to go 25 times the speed of sound? Actually, it feels like nothing. Um, only accelerating to there feels like something. So, so, the, so, the, so Starship is coming in, this, is the, if this, this platform is the Earth, it's coming in at a hypersonic velocity like this, sort of at around a 60 degree angle, so it comes like this, and then it starts falling, and then it just falls like a skydiver, and it's just controlling itself, and then it, it turns and lands, like that. So, it was in there. Perfectly elaborate explanation. Um, Oh wow, I can't believe I get to touch this thing.